try to imply some society to work for free copy reply. And why we do this job? Because when we do embedding success in BFP and we we want to uh, enhance some PFP method or later we want to do uh, something like QMM or even further. And we found that Python is the best way to do it instead of the old Fortune <coughs> code. So that's why we base, we base on the Python to write the package. But when we do that, we want to not to build a new wheel for the BFP, so we directly borrow from Quantum Expresso. So that's why we um, kind of generate the interface for the Quantum Expresso. So that's why uh, this code come. Um, yeah, before my talk, I would like a small question. Is there anyone use a QE before? If you do you write your heart on the so yes. Just once. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, more than half people, right? So <laughs> that's okay. Now we know what the quantum express does, right? We already know many things that is, uh, I would like to say, the almost most uh, popular open source. Uh, DFP code in the world, at least one of them. Uh, but when we write, first step, we know that we is a uh, executable file. First step, we have to prepare some input files, including some input file and uh, potential, some a lot of stuff. And then we write. We have to wait for finish. Then we collect the data. We do analysis, and if we want to do more, we just loop and we continue to the job. So that's the traditional way we run the DFP code. But instead of doing that, if we want to do something more, like we want to add some external potential, for example, when we do the embedding, or we may want to don't want to do some QMM, we have to uh, interact with other code, how we do it. And, or we just want to run a different uh, simulation, like I want to use uh, another can like molecular dynamic, instead of what QE already has. We want to run a different kind of similar start, or we use a different functional. Or even we, we want to change some functional. We want to implement some exchange correlation, a new style, or uh, how to do it. Or we can just want to get with functional step. We want to do some other analysis. So how to get it during the running? We do not waiting for the stop. But we run another calculation, and we want to do that indirect with the QE at the same time. So that's why we can use this Python interface. We can do it with this uh, QE backup. So that's the idea. We do this job. And here is directly give an example uh, when we write, uh, because when we skip something that we just show the code. Here is the left is we directly run with a QE or normal way, and here one with pw.executable file. And this pw2 casino will help us print uh, all the ND term here. Uh, on the right side, we have this Python interface. We run the same job, and we can see that ng almost the exact same. There are only some your make error it doesn't matter. And we can we can get same force, same stress, which makes sure that our code can get it. Everything is correct. So what's on this Python script? Or how we call QE from the Python side? So here you sample. So on the normal way. Like we just uh, give an input file and we write, so we get all the terms, stop it. So this is uh, the way the code will looks like. So the first step we will, uh, yeah, we, we want to make that easier to use it. So we also write a driver class for the QE and we can drive use the driver to run all the job, most of the job that we can use it. So first step, uh, we, if you want to run a parallel or you want to do a different embedding or something else, you can give a different communicator. So commu communicator means that we run a parallel code and how the uh, different process, how to commute. So that's, you can give a communicator and to define how they commute. And this also help us when we do the subsystem DIP, we have many subsystems and each subsystem will have their own communicator, we call some communicator. And we also have a global communicator to control each of them and to make sure each subsystem run with one uh, DFP and we can all side to control all of them. And this, if we do subsystem DFP here, communicator, we can give a subsystem communicator and then we can run the uh, in binding calculation. But here we just run one calculation 
So we give a communicator Python MPF or, Py or Python MPF version. And the, uh, we give a global communicator uh, in the parallel code, we always call it communicator common word. It's a global communicator. We can give it and we can run the parallel. Or if you don't have this code, or it's from that very hard to install, you can skip and you can give a non communicator. So, which still can run the parallel, but you cannot control how you do it like you want. You want to uh, get each processor that's hard, but the code still can write. It's no problem, but it's less control. Uh, yeah, the next step is same as normal code. We prepare an input file, and later we will show that we also can give a Python style. We can build a dictionary. We don't need to prepare an input file. We just give a dictionary, and we can pass to the driver, write the input file automatically, and we can write the job. But here we just prepare an input file, and we give a driver. Then we run the driver SF, which will run uh, SF. Then we can check convergency. After when this SF will be run until converge, and we can check convergency, and we also can get ND false rest based all this function, and that's it. So that's a very simple example. If we want to run a quantum express in the Python way, but maybe we want to know what's inside of SF. Uh, SF is just a uh, iterative way which. Uh, do the Hamiltonian downlines and we do that mixing. So we have another way to control it. So that's, we came out to another, we call iterative. So this iterative will tell the code to not run the code until converge. It just run one step. So we will control that. For example, the first step, we will do the Hamiltonian diagonalization and we will get the density to the density mixing. Uh, then we check to convert. If convert, we will break. But if not, we will continue this loop. So what this can do, and this one makes that our embedding or our all this interactive uh, possible because every step of the downlight or mix, we can get the density. So based on the density, we can calculate the potential or we can calculate other stuff and we can set external potential here and to make sure that we can interact, interact with uh, QE code, we can do the embedding or the external potential, everything we want. And because we don't need to directly modify the QE code, we just need to do here, get the density, give the potential, we run the next step down line to the mixing. And this also help us if we run some test, uh, like a, especially for some metal case, because when I run the, some metal, calculation, uh, most of them it's very hard to convert. So we have to change our parameter, we submit the job waiting for a few hundred steps and we check again, change the parameter. But here you don't have it too, because uh, you can change the mixing coefficient here and to make sure that code can continue to write. Or if you found that up to 60 steps still not convert, you can continue to write because the density function still sealed in the memory. So you can continue write without the stop and trying to anything. So it's very easy and to use it. Uh, 